Hello everybody, good morning. This is All The Things back after quite a while with another book review for you and today I think this is this is a good one. So uh, so I hope you enjoy it. But today we're talking about The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark by none other than Carl Sagan. So this book is written by Carl Sagan who is an incredibly smart person or he was an incredibly smart person, rest in peace Carl Sagan, and uh, he was into physics and science and the way the planets moved and he's done a lot of really great things for humanity and one of the things that he did which I think is incredible is he got really into his field, he got really smart in his field, but then he made time to come back and explain stuff to people in everyday terms. And this book is one of the books that Carl Sagan has written in order to do that. Now, The Demon Haunted World is a book that's about science, but it's not a textbook. It's not a difficult book with all these crazy concepts going above your head and whatnot. It is a book about the idea of science, the importance of science, and why we should use it. And what I really love about this book, it's called The Demon Haunted World because it kind of compares science and why science is good and how it helps us to live in a world of logic where things have reason and if we don't like something that's not really important or as important as whether or not it's true and it contrasts that to when people are thinking kind of without science and we believe stories and we make things up and not everything's true and why those two worlds can exist at the same time because different people believe different things but why it's not always good to just believe things, why it's good to think through things, why it's good to test what you think and if your test fails then get a new idea. Don't just keep the idea because you like it or because you're being pressured to keep it. And it goes through this book, it talks about something called a baloney detection kit. And a baloney detection kit is basically like, uh, some people call it BS, um, but baloney is like, ah, oh, that's not true, that's baloney. Um, and this book gives you a lot of tools, which I think are part of scientific thinking and part of the scientific method. They're like, beware, this is a trick that can get you if you're not careful, where it helps you with sometimes arguments that are cleverly worded, that it may be hard to tell whether or not it's true or false, or if it's something that's even provable as far as thinking straight and making sure you're getting to the point and not getting confused and going off on tangents and losing the the way of finding the real answer. So the thing above all that I love about this book, I feel like it's very accessible to everybody. It, um, it doesn't talk too high-minded and it doesn't use too many crazy words. It gets into the history of mankind and some of the fallacies that we've fallen into which is really great. It gives you real world examples. It talks about the scientific method and why it's important and it gives you a lot of examples where the scientific method has given us as humans great new things like magnetism and electricity um, and how we've misused the scientific method or maybe not believed somebody that was doing science um, and how it's turned out for us. So it, it, it goes a, around this idea of science in a lot of directions and it shows examples of when the scientific method is good and also when we don't use a scientific method what happens there's a there's a big section in here on witch hunts and the logic behind why people were uh, catching and killing witches and when you really look at it objectively and you're not looking at it with a belief system you're not looking at it with pressure from people trying to force you to act a certain way and also I mean I get that the time was different, people believed different things, but um, even in those times there were people that were able to think clearly and say this is wrong. And why were those people able to say this is wrong when lots of other people were not able to say that? Um, or they didn't say that. And this book kind of really digs into the history of us as humans and how we act and why we act and then what science can do to help us with making good decisions, communicating effectively, and really finding out if something is good or bad, really finding out if something is right or wrong. And I'm not talking philosophically, but uh, some things you can figure out are right or wrong. Like, is this screwdriver gonna work with this screw? This is the right screwdriver or this is the wrong screwdriver? There's questions you can answer with right or wrong or good or bad like that. 
and um, it gets into kind of along that line that science can answer certain questions but science cannot answer other questions like philosophy questions. Science is for stuff that you can test. Science is for stuff that you can get data on and um, it really gets you so many good examples of how to use it well, how to use it badly, what's happened when people have used it this way or that way, hoaxes like uh, crop circles, it talks about crop circles, it talks about it talks about uh, the Salem witch trials, it talks about McCarthyism, that was like uh, during the, the Red Scare when communism was the thing and it was like, oh you're a communist or you're a communist and like when they were putting people on trial for being um, communists and stuff in the United States and like how that thinking starts to happen when you don't think clearly and logically all the time. Um, it talks about flat earth a little bit and just these kind of things that are non-scientific but how do they come about? And why do people believe in them? So that we don't just yell at people and say, hey, you're wrong, you're dumb, why do you think that? But really, you, you, you think that's right from what you say, why is that? And that's even the scientific method, like really trying to understand, trying to listen, trying to observe so we can get to the right thing, not just judge things based on our feelings or based on what we want. So um, the book is by Carl Sagan. This dude is a good dude. I think you should look into him. If you haven't, he's done a lot of great things for humanity. He's one of the great humans in my book. Um, I didn't write a book, but like my metaphorical book. Um, but the book is The Demon Haunted World, Science, A Candle in the Darkness, or Science, A Candle in the Dark, sorry, by Carl Sagan. This book comes on audiobook, in case you want to listen to it in the car. This book has so many things that you just... When you listen to it, you got to think about it, and it really helps you put stuff in order. And it gives you what I was talking about earlier, an actual baloney detection kit. It lines out ways that people fall into thought traps or th bad thinking. And if you can get those down, then it really helps you say like, wait a second, that doesn't really make too much sense. Can we back up the way that was said? Um, I'm not sure if I'm okay with that. And sometimes the way something is said has a lot to do with is it true or is it false? Not necessarily what is said, but the way it's said. And so this, there's a lot of subtle things and a lot of different angles that this book goes over. It's so, I, sh I really can't rec recommend this book enough. So um, once again, The Demon Haunted World by Carl Sagan. I would say oh, if you were to read one book in the next 10 years, Probably between this book and the Jordan Peterson book, uh, 12 Rules for Life, that's a good book. But this this book really, like, science, I think is so important. And I feel it's, a lot of people think it's like, you gotta be a genius to do science, or you gotta be, have a lab coat and be mixing chemicals to do science. Science is a way of thinking. And this book really helps hammer out what the scientific method is, what the scientific idea is, not how to do this type of science, how to do that type of science, but how to think. How to think. And so I think it's great. Anyways, this has been all the things. This is the greatest book that I've read all year. I hope you guys read it. I hope you guys comment. I hope we can talk about it one day. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good night.